Oh hey everyone, this video is about three of HP's scientific calculators, 32S2, the 33S and the 35S. And for me it's interesting to look at the different product design decisions HP made across a series of devices, because broadly these calculators have very similar functionality, but physically they are quite different. Uh, the 32S2 was part of HP's Pioneer series and was released in 1991 and discontinued in 2002. Uh, the 33S, its successor, was introduced in 2003 and was discontinued on the introduction of the 35S in 2007. And so the 32S was the same form factor and keyboard layout as the other 10 calculators in the Pioneer series and there were three tiers of display used on the Pioneer calculators. The 32S2 used the mid-tier display that supported 12 digits, each a 5 by 7 dot matrix. And you can compare this to, say, the 20S, which used a 7 segment display, uh, or the 42S, which had the more sophisticated 132 by 16 dot matrix. And all the Pioneer calculators had the same keyboard layout with 37 keys, with each with different key labels for different models. And the 32S2, uh, with its two shift keys, had the busiest looking keyboard of any of the Pioneers. Uh, so for example, the more powerful 42S, uh, with its single shift key, and reliance on menus, had a much sparser looking uh, keyboard layout. And there were two colour schemes uh, for the 32S2. Uh, this was the earlier version uh, with the dark uh, screen bezel and the blue and orange shift keys. But in 1999, HP shifted to a green and purple combination and a silver coloured screen bezel uh, that was to be more like the 33S. And HP used three versions of its own Saturn processors in the Pioneers. Uh, the 32S2 used the mid-level Saka Jaiwa version with 16K ROM and 512 bytes of RAM, of which 384 were able to be accessed by the user. Another subtle difference uh, from earlier Pioneer calculators is visible on the back. Uh, so the 32S2 only has uh, two rubber feet, uh, whereas older uh, models had four. And for the 33 S HP outsourced the design to a Chinese company, Kinpo Electronics, and the results were quite polarizing because it certainly looked very different from any other HP calculator released before, or even since for that matter. And the 33 S introduced a V or chevron shaped keyboard, and this is quite reminiscent of Nokia feature phones that were designed to be picked up with two hands and tapped with your thumbs. And if you use the calculator that way, the layout may make some sense. But if you're used to using the calculator flat on the desk, this key layout can seem quite unergonomic. But some other manufacturers were adopting sloping keyboards around the same time. Uh, so for example, this uh, Texas Instruments 89 Titanium uh, has a curved keyboard, uh, but nothing as dramatic as the 33S. And Another notable uh, design feature of the uh, 33S was its regular size enter key. And this was quite a departure for an HP RPN calculator, and maybe it was partly an artifact of the calculator's new support for algebraic entry. Uh, the, the 33S also introduced a centrally positioned uh, four direction cursor key. But this was really awkward to use, uh, partly due to its placement, uh, but also its four-way rocker style action. But in general, the key action on the 33S is really good, uh, not dissimilar from the Pioneer, uh, with a rigid and satisfying tactile key action. And under the hood, the 33S adopted the MOS 6502 CPU, uh, the same CPU as on the C64 and some other 8-bit home computers. So Kinpo needed to re-engineer all of the functionality of the calculator from scratch. But along with the 6502, uh, the 33S could now incorporate 32 kilobytes of RAM, a massive increase from the 32S2. Although, as we'll see, there were some limitations around its usage. 
And on the back, uh, we can see that the 33S uh, had four uh, small rubber feet. Uh, and the calculator tended to be prone uh, to slipping on a desk. And the HP 35S was introduced to commemorate the 35th anniversary of HP's first pocket calculator and the world's first scientific calculator, uh, the HP 35. And the 35S was designed also by Kinpo Electronics but retain, returned to HP's design route. So it had a muted black, white and blue colour scheme uh, and subtly curving case uh, with a slightly raised screen uh, which all reference the design of the 35. And the 35S also adopted chamfered keys with their associated rocking action, a uh, feature of many of HP's classic calculators. And the keyboard on the 35S is generally fantastic and for me uh, the best of the three. Uh, the 35S returned to the traditional bar style uh, enter key uh, but it also introduced a new parentheses uh, primary key making algebraic entry more practical. This is an interesting trade-off uh, since the store key uh, no longer had its own primary key. Uh, there was also a new primary I key on the keyboard for entering complex numbers and the 35S also introduced uh, separate four-way cursor keys which are much more tactile and more conveniently placed than on the 33S. And the 35S used the faces of the chamfered keys to print the blue and alpha variants of the key functions which for me makes the keyboard a lot less busy. Like the 33S, the 35S had a two-line uh, display with a very clear dot matrix. Uh, Dimension-wise, the 35S is the largest of the three calculators, uh, but, not, but not by a large amount. Uh, and it, under the hood, it used a slightly more powerful um, MOS chip based on the 8502, a similar chip as used in the uh, Commodore 128. But out of the three, the 35S has the reputation of having the most logic bugs. And none of these calculators had input-output connectivity, so it was not possible to upgrade the firmware. And so as I mentioned, these three devices were broadly similar in, uh, in capability, but there were some significant evolutions in functionality over the series. So one interesting feature of all the calculators is fraction support. And so to enter a fraction on all these calculators, uh, you can press the decimal point key twice. So say to enter 2 and 3 quarters, uh, we type 2.3.4. And uh, now if we hit the enter key, uh, this will get converted to decimal. Uh, but we can toggle fraction display with the red shift and the decimal point key. Uh, and now all uh, numbers will be displayed as fractions with denominators up to 4095. And uh, the calculator is indicated to display when a fraction differs from the internally stored number. So say if I hit the sign key now, uh, there will be an indicator popped up uh, that uh, shows that the internally stored number is slightly less than the one displayed on the display. Uh, another useful feature of the fraction support is the ability to set a maximum denominator uh, or a fixed denominator. So for example, to always show fractions in twelfths, uh, we can set our denominator value using uh, the slash C key. Uh, and we also would need to set flags 8 and 9. And so for example, now if I type, uh, say, uh, 0 0.5 and hit enter, uh, that will get displayed uh, as a fraction in twelfths. Another feature supported by these calculators is the ability to enter equations and then evaluate, solve or integrate them. And this is a very useful feature and something that was not available on, say, the 42S. And the feature works more or less the same way across the uh, models. So for example, to access any two equations, uh, you would hit the equation key. 
I've already entered the fall distance equation that calculates the distance an object falls under gravity in time t. And so now to evaluate the equation, I can just hit enter. Uh, and the calculator prompts for uh, the time t. Uh, so say I can enter 5 seconds. Uh, and the distance fallen is 122.5 meters. Uh, and and we can also solve for any variable using uh, the solve key. Uh, so let's solve for t. And now the calculator prompts uh, a value for distance. So let's enter a kilometer. Uh, and then the time is 14.28 seconds. Uh, and you can also do a numeric integration of an equation over a range of values. But you'll notice that on the 33s, the decimal point is quite small and can be hard to see. And the 33s also uh, did limit the length of equations to 255 characters, but there's no arbitrary limit uh, on the 32s2 or 35s. One area where these calculators differ is around their support for algebraic mode. And the 32S2 only supported RPN. Uh, and in the Pioneer series, there was a whole separate set of algebraic scientific calculators, such as the 20S. And so it was a new approach uh, for the 33S to support both RPN and algebraic entry. And developing a dual mode calculator is inherently tricky because one area this plays itself out is on the keyboard design. So ideally if you're using algebraic mode you would expect uh, primary parentheses keys as well as an equals key. Uh, but you'll notice that uh, the 33S has neither of these. So to perform an equals operation uh, the user needs to press the enter key. And I'll switch to algebraic mode uh, using the algebraic button. And now, say, if I enter uh, 2 plus 3 times 4, and then enter, uh, you can see the equation displayed on the top line with the result below it. And one number functions are entered using postfix notation. So say to enter 2 times cos 45, uh, you'd type 2 times 45 cos But with the 35S, uh, HP made algebraic mode uh, more accessible. So as well as having primary uh, smart parentheses keys uh, that put an open and close parentheses into an expression, the 35S uh, supports a more natural prefix entry for functions. So on the 35S, uh, we can switch to algebraic mode uh, via the mode menu. And then to enter uh, 2 times cos 45, you can just type that directly. So, and on the 35S, you can hit the left arrow key uh, to go back and edit the last equation, uh, which is really handy. So complex numbers is another capability that was evolved over time. Uh, so with the 32S2 and 33S, uh, they support complex arithmetic, but in a rather awkward way. Uh, so to enter a complex number, you enter the imaginary part into the Y register and the real part into X. And this order takes some getting used to. So say to add uh, 1 plus 2i and 3 plus 4i, uh, you'd enter uh, 2, 1, uh, and then 4, 3. And now we have the whole stack occupied. And to do complex arithmetic, you prepend your operation with a complex key. Uh, so I'll hit complex and then addition. And so the answer is 4 plus 6i. Uh, but the same operation on the 35s is a lot easier. And here we'll use uh, the i key to enter complex numbers and they get put into a single register. Uh, so I'll type 1i2, and then enter, and then 3i4. And to add those numbers, I can just, just hit plus. 
Uh, but the complex number support on the 35S does have a lot of quirks uh, that I covered in a separate review video. Uh, and the 35S also supported uh, vector operations. And vectors uh, entered using the square brackets key. Uh, and again, this is quite easy to use. But none of these calculators support uh, general matrix operations. So another area that evolved over time was with keystroke programming. So the 32S2 only supported programs within its 384 bytes of RAM, which is obviously quite small. Uh, the 33S added a lot more RAM, uh, but only supported label addressing. Uh, so with only 26 labels, it was difficult to write a program making use of the entire 30 kilobytes of memory. Uh, the 35S also uh, allows both label and line number addressing in programs. Uh, but indirect branching, which allows uh, the contents of memory register to be used as the target of a branching instruction, was oddly omitted from the 35S. So in summary, it's interesting to see how these devices evolved over time. Uh, the 32S2 was a basic RPN scientific calculator that was constrained by a single line screen and small amount of RAM. Uh, the 33S was really a re-implementation of the 32S2 with a radically different product design that alienated a lot of HP users. Though personally I don't mind the look of the calculator so much as the sloping keyboard. And the 33S added algebraic mode, uh, which was an effort to make the calculator appeal to a wider audience. The 35S returned to more of a traditional look and added some nice functionality such as proper complex number and vector support. And it's somewhat hampered though by its reputation for bugs. But overall, all of these calculators are quite usable and have some unique features uh, in their fraction support, uh, their equation functionality, and their straightforward interaction patterns. And it'll be interesting to see if HP ever releases a successor to the 35S. Seems to be no longer available for sale in many countries, and there is speculation about it being discontinued. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you did, please subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to be alerted of new videos.